Hey everyone, I'm Flo, Dude is Behind the Camera, and we're all about simple food, simple faith. You know, we are all feeling the pinch of the price of groceries skyrocketing, and I'm here to show you some recipes that will help your family save some money. But before we get started, I just wanna give a huge thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Without you and your financial support, this channel wouldn't even exist. So we really hope that you enjoy every recipe that we post. I also want to give a shout out to all of our local viewers who are so kind and nice to stop by to say hi when they see me out and about in the city. Just thanks so much for taking the time to say hello. And if you ever see me, don't be shy, come and say hi. To help our family save some money, I try to keep our dinners under $10 per meal. I checked the flyers today and even with current pricing, the sale price for chicken and meat was about three to $4 a pound. And most of my recipes require about a pound of meat. So that already is much less than $10 when you're feeding your family. Another tip is when it is on sale, buy larger portions so that you can freeze some of it for easier prep at a later date. You can even marinate the meat before you freeze it. You can barely get a single restaurant meal to feed one person at $10. So here are my four recipes that will help your family save some money. We are making mi goreng today, and this is my version of it. It is a popular street food in Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia, and it essentially just means fried noodles. We're gonna start with the sauce. I'm using three tablespoons of ketchup mayonnaise, and this is a dark sweet soy sauce. It's almost molasses-like. If you don't have this, you could substitute with uh, equal parts of soy sauce and brown sugar. This is a unique product called ketchup mayonnaise, but here it's marketed as sweet soy sauce, but it is the exact same thing. I do a lot of Southeast Asian cooking now, so I like to have a bottle of this in my fridge. And it's, it does taste different than using just like dark soy with brown sugar or um, regular soy with brown sugar, but you can make your own. I'm also adding two tablespoons of regular soy or light soy. One tablespoon of oyster sauce. Two tablespoons of ketchup. It's what adds the tang. And one teaspoon of a sambal. And sambal is a uh, chili paste. I'm not gonna, maybe, I'll, is that enough? I think you should ease up on it, yeah. Because <laughs> the kids are gonna. All right, I will use half a teaspoon, but you can use a teaspoon or more, depending on your level of tolerance to spiciness and heat. And if you don't want any spice, just omit it. You don't have to have spice if you don't like it. We're just gonna mix it all together and set it aside. What I really want to do is also add a teaspoon of a shrimp paste, but shrimp paste, I'm trying to keep it simple for you guys. So shrimp paste is a super concentrated, I don't know what, I don't know what it is, made out of shrimp, but you just need a little bit of it to add like that extra depth of flavor, like an umami to your dish. But I know that it's not easily found, so we're gonna keep it simple for you guys today. Also using two shallots. I'm just gonna slice it up. Oops. You still have your finger? <laughs> yes. It was just a piece of shallot that rolled off the edge. All right, that looks good enough. Two stalks of a green onion that I'm just gonna cut on the diagonal. And you can cut them however you like. You can leave them in long pieces if you like. But I'm gonna separate the light green from the dark green, and I'm gonna add that in the cooking part of it, and the dark green I'm gonna use as garnish. I'm also using three stalks of Chinese greens, and this one is called choi sum, or yu choi. And I'm just gonna slice it up. 
You can use bok choy in here or even cabbage. Texture wise, you can also keep them in long lengths if you want, instead of chopping it up like this. It's all up to you what you like your mouthfeel to be like. And we have about three ounces of bean sprouts. It's just about a handful, no secret measurement. I also have two eggs that I'm gonna lightly beat. Whoa, look at how big that yolk is. I have about five to six ounces of shrimp that's already been deshelled and deveined. And uh, these are probably 31 to 40 size. And I just grabbed enough for three shrimp per person. I also have about five to six ounces of chicken that I've cut up into bite-sized pieces. And I used one thigh and a drumstick. You can probably use a whole breast if you wanted to use chicken breast. And if you don't want chicken, you can use pork or tofu. It's really, really flexible. Okay, I'm using my wok today. I'm gonna turn it on to medium heat. If you don't have a wok, you can use a large frying pan. I'm doing the eggs first, and because I can heat up my wok and it's well seasoned, I know my egg is not going to stick. If you have a non-stick frying pan, that might be a good option for you. The wok is heated when you see that wisp of smoke. I'm adding about a tablespoon of oil, cooking oil. I'm using corn oil today, and I'm gonna add my egg. I want to make a thin pancake so that I can cut it up. I'm just going to push the uncooked eggs out to the side so I don't have to flip it. Or you can do this in two separate batches so you end up with two egg crepes, I guess. AKA thin omelet. Yes. Just gonna turn off my heat and I'm just gonna roll it up in my wok and try to lift it up. Putting that on my cutting board and we're just gonna slice that up into little ribbons. And if you don't want to do it like this, you can totally just scramble your eggs. But this just adds to the mouth feel of little egg ribbons. Turning my wok back on, medium heat. Okay. Adding a tablespoon of cooking oil and adding my shallots. Adding my garlic. You just want your shallots to be um, cooked through, slightly brown. Garlic, you only want to cook for about 30 seconds until you start to smell it. You don't want the garlic to burn. Okay, and adding our chicken. and we want to cook this chicken through. Once the chicken is mostly cooked through, you can push them aside and add the shrimp. This will only take about a minute or two to cook through. Well, look at that beautiful color. Mm -hmm. I'm using this yellow egg noodle 
And you can use like instant noodles even if you want. This is fresh already cooked noodles. If you're using instant noodles, you can um, pre-cook them, like boil them first before adding them. All right, we're adding the rest of our ingredients. So the um, Chinese veggies and the white to light green parts of the green onion, bean sprouts, egg, and our beautiful sauce. And this is why you need a wok, people. So the amount of noodles I used was about a pound and a quarter. That smells amazing, dude. Yeah, it does. And you just want to cook this until everything is heated through, that everything is combined really well. And all the noodles are covered in the sauce. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to dig in. I wish you guys could smell this. And before I forget, let's add a drizzle of sesame oil. And some green onions. That plate's gonna get heavy real fast. Yeah, I think so. That's only half of it. Can you imagine, you guys, this is less than 10 bucks. And this will feed my family of four. even with the regular price of food today. I am using about a pound and a quarter of lean ground beef. You can use regular ground beef, whatever you like. One tablespoon of soy sauce. One tablespoon of oyster sauce. And if you don't have oyster sauce, just use another tablespoon of soy. One teaspoon of brown sugar. And the sugar is just to balance out the flavors. If you don't want to add sugar, don't add it. Some pepper. And maybe about half a teaspoon of salt. And we're just gonna mix all this up. After you've mixed up the beef really well, I am going to divide it into four burgers. So they're approximately five ounces each, maybe five and a half. And we're gonna form three quarter inch patties. Set them aside. So you can cook these however you like, on the stovetop or on the grill. We don't have a grill, so we don't like cooking hamburger patties on the stovetop because it just splatters and makes such a mess. What we like to do is sous vide our burgers. So I'm gonna show you how to do that today. But if you don't have a sous vide device or you don't know what I'm talking about, you can just use the stovetop or the grill. All right, I use the Juul device. And what I like about it is that it gives me a visual of what I'm looking to cook. So for a burger, I would like them medium well. And so I'm cooking at 147 degrees Fahrenheit. And I set the time for fresh and for a three quarter inch patty. And I just start it. I'm putting two patties in a large Ziploc bag. Two in the other one. The sous vide device is actually one of my go-to devices to use in the kitchen. I love sous videing steaks and pork chops, things that are generally tough to cook when you're, when you're using the stovetop or baking. It's never quite the exact 
I guess, texture that I want it to be, and it's not as juicy. So once I started using a sous vide device, oh my goodness, it makes such a difference. And using it for burgers doesn't make sense, seemingly, but it actually, it works really, really well. It only takes 22 minutes to get these burgers cooked to the exact temperature that I want them cooked to, and we just torch them afterwards so that we get the browning on top, and it's so much cleaner. There's no splatter to clean up, it's just done. So once the water is heated up, I'm just gonna submerge these patties right in. I haven't vacuum sealed them or anything, but the water pressure will push the plastic against the burgers. And you have to make sure that your food is completely submerged so that they can cook through properly. And I just start my timer for 22 minutes. I'm gonna cut up one small onion for the gravy. So while the burgers are cooking, I can work on the other things. And what, another thing I love about the sous vide device is that you can't overcook whatever you're making because even if I'm cooking for 22 minutes, I can leave it in that water for another 45 minutes without the burger overcooking. It'll just keep it at the exact same temperature as it's been. For the gravy, I have about a cup of beef broth I'm adding two tablespoons of soy sauce and two teaspoons of Worcestershire. And one tablespoon of cornstarch. Cornstarch will just give you this translucent gravy as opposed to using flour, which gives you kind of a creamy gravy. Just wanna make sure that the cornstarch dissolves. I'll have to give this a stir again later, but I don't want any lumps in there. And remember, cornstarch only dissolves in like room temperature to cool liquid. If you use hot liquid, it's not gonna work. It will just lump up on you. All right, we're just gonna set that aside. Okay, I'm gonna use the same pan for my eggs as well as my gravy, so I'm gonna get started on the eggs first and set them aside. Turning my burner on to a medium-high heat, adding about a tablespoon of vegetable oil. I'm gonna do two eggs at a time. I'm just gonna cook until all the white is cooked through and you get a nice crispy bottom. All right, I'm just gonna season with a little bit of salt on each one. And transfer them onto a plate. Perfectly cooked eggs, look at Yo. that. And once you're done your eggs, turning the heat down to medium, adding two tablespoons of butter, unsalted butter, and we're gonna get our onions going. You just wanna cook it for about two to three minutes until the onions are a bit translucent. All right, I'm turning the heat down to low and we're gonna add our gravy mixture. Just give it a stir, make sure that cornstarch at the bottom is fully dissolved back into the gravy. And we're just gonna cook this until it turns a dark brown. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be so good. I wish you guys can smell it. Do you see that color changing? It looks so good. All right, once it is bubbly like this and thickened, you can turn the 
stove off. All right, I know they don't look like much, but they're perfectly cooked inside and out. Okay, maybe not on the outside just yet because we still have to torch them. I'm just using the paper towel to kind of pat down any moisture on there. And that's just gonna allow a better sear mm -hmm. to happen. All right, now the fun part. Yeah. Torch is not super powerful, but it does the job. And it's great because it just fits right onto the butane canister that I use for my butane stove. All right, oh my goodness, it looks so, so good. It could, oh, it smells amazing. Mm -mm -mm. Can't wait. Okay, make sure you get some nice jasmine rice on a plate. I'm gonna put this burger right on top, this patty. Oh yeah. Cover it with some gravy. And a fried egg right on top. I have six chicken thighs that I've already cut up and it has a skin on, but you can use boneless, skinless thighs or even chicken breasts if you like. I chose to use a skin on because I actually bought the ones with the bone in and deboned it myself so I can save the bones for soup and cut up the rest for this stir fry. I find that the bone-in chicken is so much cheaper, especially when it's on sale compared to boneless, skinless. So especially now when price of groceries are so much more than they used to be, I am happy to debone my own chicken. I'm also using a small thumb-sized piece of ginger. Plus the growths. <laughs> and this is the only thing you're cutting up today aside from the chicken. I'm just gonna slice this up and add it to the chicken. So however many slices you can get. And we're just gonna toss that in here. And that just helps to <laughs> take away the chicken smell, as my mom says. All right, we're gonna marinate the chicken. I'm adding one teaspoon of sugar. One teaspoon of soy sauce. This is just regular soy or light soy. And one teaspoon of oyster sauce. Oh, one more thing. One teaspoon of cornstarch. We're gonna let this marinate for about half an hour if you have the time. Otherwise you can just let it sit for like maybe five minutes. The longer you let it marinate, the more flavorful it's gonna be. So you can even do this the night before if you like. You just have it covered and keep it in the fridge. In the meantime, you can also get your broccoli or we're using broccolini today. Uh, you can get that ready. And I'm also preparing the sauce. So I'm starting with a quarter cup of chicken stock. If you don't have chicken stock or chicken broth, you can use water adding two teaspoons of soy sauce. One tablespoon of oyster sauce. And one teaspoon of dark soy. Now dark soy will just give it extra color, but if you don't have dark, you can just use another teaspoon of regular soy. And that's it, that's your sauce. This is broccolini and it's more tender than regular broccoli. The kids really like it, dude really likes it. They are sort of a cross between like a Chinese broccoli and regular broccoli. And I found it at Costco, so I'm assuming that a lot of you who shop at Costco can probably find the same thing. And if you don't have broccolini, you can always use regular broccoli. It will taste just as yummy. I just find that these are more tender and I can leave them like this. I'm not chopping them up any further. 
We're using about three quarter pound to about a pound of broccoli, broccolini, and you can use as little or as much as you want. And one last thing before we get started, two teaspoons of cornstarch, and about a tablespoon of water. And we are making this cornstarch slurry for thickening the sauce. And it's just one more thing to get ready because the cooking process is really fast. Right, getting my wok heated up on medium high. If you don't have a wok, you can use a, a large frying pan. I just find the wok is easier to stir fry all of the ingredients. As soon as you see a wisp of smoke, it's ready to, it's heated up and you can just add your oil. Adding two tablespoons of cooking oil. I'm using corn oil, you can use vegetable oil or whatever oil you want. And we're just gonna get our chicken in there, along with the ginger. Maybe half, so we can get it going first without overcrowding. Just trying to get a good sear on it on one side before flipping it over. Just gonna flip them over. And then you can toss it around and cook it through for about 80%, 80-90% cooked through. We're just going to remove this. It's been cooking for about four minutes or so. And we'll do the second batch in the same manner. Okay, turning down the wok heat to about medium, adding one more tablespoon of cooking oil. And if you have enough cooking oil in there, don't feel the need to add more. And then adding the broccolini. Stir this around a little bit. Okay, then we're gonna add our sauce. and cover it and let it steam for about three to five minutes, depending on how tender you want the broccolini. I would check it at three minutes with a fork just to see if it's fork tender. And if it needs a few more minutes, then just let it um, steam for another couple of minutes. Okay, it's been three minutes, just checking to see if they're done. Still a little bit hard for us, so I'm gonna leave it in there for another two minutes. All right. Oh, that's much better. Okay, I'm gonna push the broccolini to the side. And add my slurry. Make sure you give it a stir. Just add it to the middle. Well, now it's really thick. It's probably too thick for me. Adding some water. And adding my chicken back, along with any juices. We're gonna let this cook for another two to three minutes until the chicken is completely cooked through. Right, so for the gravy, as you can see, I added too much cornstarch slurry, so then it thickened it too much. And you can always fix it by adding some more water. Okay, turning off the heat. And adding about a teaspoon of sesame oil. And that's it. Give it a stir and plate it. You can also remove those pieces of ginger if you like, but some people like to eat that ginger. It smells so good. Oh my goodness, it does. Look, it's so saucy. I can smell that sesame oil too. So here I have two cups of flour and I'm going to add a three quarter teaspoons of salt. And then you're just going to whisk it until everything is combined. 
And then I'm going to add two tablespoons of vegetable oil. I see, Ella, that you're more precise than I am. I don't want to mess anything up. <laughs> it's one. You know, Cat Be Bothered Flo would just, you know, pour in some oil and probably mess up the recipe. <laughs> That's true, and we know how exact <laughs> baking needs to be. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm going to add three quarter cups of warm water. I think it's about 40 degrees Celsius. Should have taken the whisk out before I did that. Okay. And then I'm just gonna start mixing it with my hands. And then you're just gonna mix it like this until it becomes no longer sticky, so that's not sticking to your hands anymore. And if you need, you can add more flour or more water, depending on what the consistency is. I do find with making anything that has a dough that the humidity in the weather actually affects whether or not the dough is too sticky or not sticky enough or um, too dry depending on the weather. Should I help by adding some more flour, Ella? <laughs> yes, please. Maybe like <laughs> a tablespoon? Tablespoon? -ish. Okay, yeah. Well, I'm just going to dump some. Yeah. Like that? I think so. Yes. Thank you. You think it's almost there. So if you stretch it out and you see that it's still a little bit sticky, so if my stick, my hands over here, there's still dough sticking to it. So that uh, means you might need a little bit more flour. Okay. Like another tablespoon-ish amount. <laughs> Huh? Yeah, that's good. Then you can start going like this just because it's easier to get the flour incorporated with the rest of the dough. Like stretching it out a little bit? Yeah, kind of like kneading it, but not really. Okay, I think it's good to go now. Awesome. That was easy. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to need to sprinkle a little bit of flour onto the surface that you're going to be kneading the dough on okay. so that it doesn't stick. Okay. Like that? Gonna, yes. And I'm just going to put this on here try to get the last remaining bits of the dough from the bowl. Leave no dough behind, girl. Yes. Okay, so now I'm going to start kneading it. And how I learned to knead it when I was at school is that you can just stick your, the bottom of your palm in here and then pull it up, turn it around, and flip it maybe like a quarter. And then just keep on doing that until it's no longer sticky. Again, you might need to add more flour. Onto the... Onto here. Oh, onto the board. Yeah. And then you can just keep on doing that until you get a nice, smooth ball of dough. Okay, so it's almost done. I'm just going to knead it like a couple more times. And then, so you see here, it's super smooth over here. My hands aren't sticking to it anymore. So now you can start to separate it. And we're going to make 16 small tortillas. So, let's see. So then, once you get these, you can just roll them into kind of like a ball and then press it down so it's kind of like a puck-sized or a puck kind of shape so that it's easier to roll out into a circle. I'm going to leave those over here. Can I help you with that? Yes, please. Yeah, some of these are like way bigger than others. Yeah. So after you're done rolling them into these shapes, or shaping them into these shapes, you can put them on a plate or just wherever you want and cover them with a towel so that the dough doesn't dry out. Oh, that's smart. Yeah, I'm just gonna cover them. Okay, and I'm going to roll out this one over here. So I guess I can just start rolling it out and hope that it doesn't turn into like a weird triangle shape. There you go. Thanks.
How flat do you need to roll it for? I think it needs to be pretty flat, because otherwise it's like kind of thick and kind of hard to eat sometimes. So I'm almost done, and I'm just going to roll it out a couple more times. All right, so you can see how thin it is. That's a lot better. OK, and you're going to put it on another plate and cover it so that the dough doesn't dry out, because I'm going to wait a little bit before I make them. All right, so we're going to cook them on a crepe pan. How high is the heat? Uh, medium high. Medium high. OK. OK. I guess we could just have to wait until it heats up. Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna put this onto your pan and you're gonna wait maybe 30 seconds. Oh, you can see that it's starting to cook through. Oh, yeah. It's much faster on the butane stove than it on is. <laughs> our new glass top stove. Okay, I'm gonna flip it. and for maybe another 30 seconds. And you're going to keep on flipping it until you start to see golden brown spots appearing on the tortilla. I'm gonna flip it over now. As you can see, there are some brown spots starting to appear. And it's also starting to bubble a little bit, right? Yeah. Looks good. It does. I'm gonna flip it maybe one more time. I don't want it to burn, but I want it to be more brown. And once it's done, you want to put it on a plate and cover it with a paper towel so that it keeps warm. Paper towel or tea towel? Tea towel. So Ella's going to finish the tortillas in the kitchen, and I will show you how to make the mushu. So for sake of time today, we wanted to just prep all the ingredients and just show you how to cook the mushu pork, since Ella showed you how to make the tortillas. I have half a pound of pork sirloin that I've already sliced into thin slices. And if you don't have pork sirloin, I bought it because it was on sale. You can use pork tenderloin. That would also be a good option. I'm adding two teaspoons of soy sauce. One teaspoon of rice wine. And you can use Shaoxing wine, which is what I would normally use but they've been out at the store, so I'm just using this, which is a great substitute. And if not, you can always use bourbon, whiskey, anything like that would add some really yummy flavors. I'm also adding about an eighth of a teaspoon ground white pepper. And we're just gonna let this marinate while we prep the rest of the ingredients. For the sauce, we are using one tablespoon of oyster sauce, one tablespoon of hoisin sauce, one teaspoon of soy sauce, half a teaspoon of sesame oil, and two tablespoons of water. and give it a good stir, mix it together, and we're gonna set this aside because this will go into uh, the dish when we cook it all together. I'm using some wood ear, or it's also called black fungus, and I really like the texture of this in the mushu pork. It comes in a pack sort of like this and is dried, and it takes about half an hour to just rehydrate it in like hot water or like warm to like boiled water. This is about a tablespoon of dried that has expanded to maybe about half a cup. I am using three medium eggs. You can use two to three large eggs if you like. We're just gonna beat them lightly. and set that aside. I also sliced up one small onion 
two stalks of a green onion. I've got two cloves of garlic that I'm going to uh, run through the garlic press. And I just have a few pieces of green onions on the side just for garnish. Okay, I'm just gonna heat up my wok. We're gonna start with the eggs. And we want this on medium high. Now, I've been really enjoying cooking with Ella. She has been such a uh, yeah, it's such a joy to be working with. When she was little, I was really impatient. I just wanted to get dinner on the table and I didn't have the time to really teach her how to cook. And as she got older, she just started looking for recipes. She started helping me in the kitchen and taking a foods class at school has uh, increased her skills on like what she's able to do. And it has been, yeah, just such a pleasant joy and time spent together uh, working with her in the kitchen. Adding a tablespoon of vegetable oil. I'm going to use half my eggs first. So I just want kind of a pancake. So I want to slice it up into strips. And if you can't be bothered with that, you can just scramble it, no big deal. Okay, I'm just gonna put that on my cutting board and get the next one going. Okay, taking that, just putting it on top of the other and we're gonna slice into this with a knife in a second. I'm actually gonna cheat and just use my scraper because I need to use it anyways. So I'm just gonna cut it into little strips. And for us, it's just a, it has to do with the mouth feel and just getting the textures right. Right, turning the wok back on to medium high. Adding a tablespoon of vegetable oil. And then getting the onions in. You know those days when you're just moving too fast for your body to catch up to your brain? <laughs> I was wondering, where, where's all the veggies? Well, because I haven't chopped up my cabbage. I'm using half a head of just green cabbage. And we're just gonna shred it. All right, continuing on, I'm going to press my garlic into the pan, to the wok. You know what, if you don't have a wok, you can just use a large frying pan, no big deal. Look how juicy this garlic is from my garden. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, oh, that's what fresh garlic looks like. Oh. Not the dry stuff we get in the supermarket. Okay, you just want to stir this for about 30 seconds while the garlic cooks and it becomes fragrant. You don't want it to burn. Push all your ingredients to the side and add your pork. Just gonna stir this up now. You want the pork to be fully cooked through. Once it's just cooked through, add your cabbage. Stir this up a little bit. Add your wood ear. Adding the sauce. Now we just want the cabbage to cook through and the sauce will help to do that as it heats up and steams the cabbage. All right, so that was cooking for about two to three minutes and see how the cabbage has wilted and the sauce has kind of steamed it up. I'm adding my eggs back in and I'm gonna to toss in the green onions. I just want the onions to cook in a little bit. 
so they're not like super raw. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. It's very reminiscent of Sandong restaurant in San Francisco where we used to live. We used to love eating there. This was one of our favorite dishes. All right, what have we got? Ta-da! Amazing. It looks super amazing. Thanks so much, Ella. You're welcome. Let's make one for Bubba. They look so good. I guess maybe that's too much filling, huh? Yeah, let's not uh, get overly <laughs> ambitious, Flo. All right, how about that? Yeah, that's conservative. You know, guys, I always put too much on there. <laughs> I'll give you a piece of green onion because we know you like that sort of thing. And would you like some hoisin sauce on top? Uh, but of course. 